Hello, my name is Brian Quinn. I'm a technical director on the ServiceNow product success team uh, with a focus on our cloud products. In this session, we'll be talking about AWS credentialist cloud discovery, and this will actually be split into three parts. Uh, here in part one, we'll talk about the overview and the accessor account setup in both AWS and ServiceNow. Before we get started, here's a quick safe harbor notice. I may make some forward-looking statements, but those should be treated as uh, informational only. Uh, it's not a commitment and um, it is subject to change. So the agenda for, for this session is we'll start with an overview of uh, Assume Role and AWS organizations uh, and the, the overall uh, structure of how Assume Role works for cloud discovery. Uh, and then we'll get into the AWS configuration specifically for the Accessor account, and then the ServiceNow configuration for the Accessor account, uh, followed by a demo to show the configuration uh, from start to finish in AWS and ServiceNow, and then we'll wrap up with a summary. Uh, so an AWS organization is just a collection of AWS accounts. Uh, at its core, there'll be a management account, and then everything else is a member account underneath the organization. Uh, AWS allows IAM roles to be attached to EC2 virtual machines. This will grant the virtual machine all of the rights and privileges defined in the IAM policy uh, without needing specific credentials. Uh, AWS also allows for assume role between different accounts, uh, but it does require configuration of trust relationships and IAM policies to, to allow this. Uh, and then what assume role does for, uh, in that case is it'll generate a temporary credential uh, to access that target account. Uh, the ServiceNow uh, recommended configuration for cloud AWS Cloud Discovery involves two levels of Assume Role. Uh, there'll be an Assume Role from the Accessor account to the Management account. And the Accessor account is just the account that the mid-server is running in. Uh, and then there's also an Assume Role between the Management account and to all other member accounts uh, when Cloud Discovery is discovering those other member accounts. Uh, so there are really three steps for the credentialist authentication. Uh, first, the MID will authenticate to the Accessor account uh, using the IAM role or instance profile that's attached to the EC2 instance. Uh, the MID will then use cross-assume role to generate temporary credentials for the management account. Uh, so this will be from the Accessor account to the management account. And then finally, if we're discovering a member account, the MID will also use org assume role to generate temporary credentials for uh, whatever member account is being discovered. And this is happening at, from the management account to the member account. So here's kind of a diagram, uh, kind of uh, highlighting um, how this is all set up and the two levels of Assume Role. Uh, first, we'll start with the Accessor account where we have an EC2 uh, instance with the mid server installed on it. Uh, we will have an IAM role attached to this EC2 instance. And the IAM policies within it will be uh, something to enable cloud discovery and then something to allow assume role to the management account. Um, we will then use, the mid server will then use cross assume role uh, to assume role into the management account. And the management account will require some setup. Uh, it will have an IAM role uh, with a trust relationship back to the accessor account in addition to its own set of IAM policies. Uh, and then if we're discovering a member account, we'll the mid server will also do an assume role from the management account into the member account using uh, org assume role. Again, on the member account, we're gonna need another role um, with the trust relationship set up to the management account and some IAM policies to enable cloud discovery as well. Um, so in, in this session, we're gonna focus on just the accessor account setup. Uh, and in the other sessions, we'll talk about the management account and member account setup uh, as well. So on the Accessor account on the AWS side, uh, we'll first need the EC2 instance with the mid-server installed. Uh, we'll need an IAM role created um, with the following configuration. It will need a trust to the EC2 service. This will allow it to be attached to the, the EC2 instance. Um, uh, and then it will need certain policies. Uh, we recommend using the Amazon Managed Read-Only Access Policy. Uh, that'll enable us to, to to run discovery on all of the resources. Uh, we do also support custom IAM policies to enable cloud discovery, 
these uh, the permit the exact permissions that are required are on the doc site. So you could create a custom IAM, IAM policy uh, that's a little more limited than the the AWS managed read only policy. Um, but for ease of use, uh, my recommendation is usually to go with the read only access policy uh, because if you go with the custom policy, you may need to update that as we release new patterns and make changes to existing patterns. Uh, in addition to the uh, IAM policy that enables discovery, we also need a custom IMA, IAM policy to allow the assume role into the management account. So here's kind of a screenshot of what a role might look like in AWS. Uh, so there'll be, when you create the IAM role, there'll be a section for trust relationships and this should be should trust the EC2 service, uh, and this will allow us to attach uh, this role to the EC2 instance. Uh, for permissions, so these are the IAM policies that are get attached to the role. Uh, we'll have two. And in this case, I'm showing a custom policy to enable discovery. Uh, this could be the read-only access policy as well. And then there's the custom policy to allow the assume role. Um, in this case, the permissions are to allow the STS assume role, and then you would specify the ARN for the role in the management account um, that will be assumed. On the ServiceNow side, uh, under your mid-server parameters, you, there is a, a parameter mid AWS instance profile name. So you'll set that to the IAM role name that is attached to the EC2 instance. Uh, then you'll use Cloud Discovery Workspace to create a service account record uh, for the AWS account hosting the mid-server, so your accessor account. Uh, in the workspace, you'll use the test account to validate. Uh, once the account is validated, that'll save the account as well in the CMDB. Uh, if you uh, click Next and Refresh Data Centers, this should do a discovery of all the AWS regions. Um, now at this point, the discovery schedule does not need to be saved. We just want to go through and create that account uh, and do that refresh data centers to give us uh, a good indication that the configuration is set up properly. Uh, so at this point, you can either close the workspace uh, or click back to return to the previous page. Uh, when we get into part two, setting up the management uh, account, um, we'll also be using the cloud discovery workspace. Um, so if you want, if you're going to be continuing with part two, then maybe clicking back is the better option versus closing out the workspace entirely um, when you're done with the testing. Uh, so from the screenshots from a ServiceNow instance, uh, here we've got the configuration parameters from a mid-server. So you can see the instance profile name and we just set it to the IAM role name. Uh, it's attached to the EC2 instance. And then here on the Cloud Discovery Workspace, uh, we'll be creating the new service account, um, giving it the account ID and, and a name. Uh, we don't need to set a credential since we're doing this credentialously. Uh, we'll use the test account to, to make sure everything is set up properly, uh, which will then save the account as well. Uh, and then we'll click Next to do the refresh data centers uh, to really make sure that the patterns are executing properly and have the uh, at least the basic permissions to assume role and discover the regions. All right, so that covers the, the overview and the kind of the setup. And now we'll actually go through a demo uh, of setting this up in the AWS and uh, ServiceNow. Here we are in the AWS console for a member account in a demo organization that I have set up. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll go to the IAM module and we're going to create a new IAM role. So we'll go to roles and create a role. We're going to, the trusted entity type is going to be AWS service and we're going to do EC2. Click Next. For the IAM policies, we're going to start with the read-only access policy. And this will enable discovery for this account.
and we will give it a role name. And then we'll create the role. Now, if we open this role up, we have the permissions for the read-only access, but we still need to add the permission to assume role into the management account. So from here, we're going to create an inline policy. And for service, we will choose STS. And allow assume role. And we'll add the ARN for another account. And we'll put in the account number for the management account. And we will put in the role that will exist in the management account. So we haven't created this role there yet, um, but we will in part two. And we can go ahead and click next. And we'll give this inline policy a name. Um, just so we know what the policy is doing. Okay, so now our role is set up. Now we need to attach it to an EC2 instance. So we will go to the EC2 module. Open up my running instances. I already have an EC2 instance set up with a mid server installed on it. And you can see here, there's currently no IAM role attached to it. So we will go to actions, security, modify IAM role. And we will choose our SN mid server EC2 role that we just created. We'll update the IAM role. And that should be it on the AWS side. So obviously you would work with your uh, AWS administrator to have this set up. Um, if, you're, uh, if, if this isn't something you have access to, you'll have to work through them to, to get this set up. But this will at least give you an idea of the kind of configuration that they will go through uh, to set up the Accessor account. So now we'll move on to the ServiceNow instance and we'll set up, uh, it, set up the Accessor account there and do some testing as well. Here we are in the ServiceNow instance, uh, looking at the list of mid servers. In this case, I only have the one mid server set up that's uh, running in AWS in the accessor account that we just configured. So I will click into the mid server and under configuration parameters, I'm going to click new and we are going to look for mid AWS instance profile name. And here we just put in the name of the IAM role we just created in AWS and attached to the EC2 instance. Once that is done, we can open up the Cloud Discovery workspace. We'll go to Cloud Discovery. And we can create a new discovery schedule. And we will give the discovery schedule a name, AWS uh, organization, organization Cloud Discovery. We will set this cloud provider to AWS. We're going to use a specific mid server. Uh, because we are relying on the, the IAM role being attached to the EC2 instance uh, that the mid server is running on, um, you should really use specific mid server or specific mid cluster to make sure discovery is using the appropriate mid server. In this case, I'm going to do specific mid server. 
Now this will give me a list of all mid servers here. If you toggle this credential list discovery um, option, this will filter the list to only show mid servers where that instance profile name mid parameter is set. Uh, in this case, it really doesn't matter if this is on or off, uh, as long as you select the right mid server, right cluster. Um, this this option is just to help filter the list down, uh, if you need. We'll click next. All right, we're going to create a new service account. This is going to be our accessor account. We'll put in the account ID. We'll leave the credentials blank. And we'll click test account. This should just take a moment for the pattern to run to validate the account. But if this is a brand new mid server or the mid server has just been restarted, sometimes the patterns have to sync to the mid server. So it could take uh, three, four, five minutes uh, for the pattern to finish. Okay, so now that the pattern finished, the account was validated successfully, and this account is now saved in the CMDB. Now, like I mentioned in the slides, we're actually going to go a step further. We're going to click Next. This should automatically kick off the data center discovery pattern. Um, so if it doesn't, you can always click the Refresh Data Centers. Uh, and then we can click on Specific Data Centers and just make sure all the data centers are populated correctly. Uh, that's a good indication that the pattern uh, finished successfully uh, and that the permissions are set up properly so we are able to run API calls to the accessor account. We can click back and we will use this uh, workspace to set up after we've done the management account setup in part two. So I will uh, leave this screen up and we will come back to this in part two. And now we'll go through a summer, quick summary before wrapping things up. Okay, so in summary, there are the three steps for credentialist authentication in an AWS organization. We've got the mid-server uh, authenticating to the accessor account using the IAM role and instance profile. That's what we covered in, in this session. Uh, so the configuration uh, and attachment of the IAM role is required in AWS. And we went through what it looks like to actually create that role and attach it. Uh, so you have some idea of what the AWS, your AWS administrator is going through. Uh, then in ServiceNow, that IAM role must be defined uh, as a mid-server parameter. And then we need to create that service account and do some, some basic testing to make sure that uh, the permissions are set up properly. Um, the other two steps, uh, so the mid-server will use cross-assume role to generate temporary credentials for the management account uh, from the accessor account. That will be covered in part two. And then the third step is the mid-server using the org assume role to generate temporary credentials for each member account. Um, and that's coming from the, the management account and we'll cover that in part three. Right. Thank you for your time and uh, I hope to see you over in the part two session. Thank you.